One of the single most important things you guys will need for growth and development in Warpath are going to be resources. This is going to be the most comprehensive video on YouTube for resource gathering in Warpath. We're going to give you guys all of the information, tips, and tricks you guys are going to need to increase your resource gathering capabilities. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Welcome back guys. Before we get the video kicked off, if you guys get value out of this video, if you guys learn anything from this video or any other video on the channel, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already so you don't miss any future uploads. Let's try to get this video to at least 150 likes. And if you guys know anybody that is new in Warpath and needs some more help and guidance, feel free to share the video with them. Let them know about the channel. We've got a bunch of videos dedicated to helping new players. All right, now let's start with the very most basic aspects of resource gathering. All right, guys, so the first and easiest and most simple way that you guys are going to be able to collect and build up your resources in Warpath is going to be through the resource collection mines. You guys are gonna be able to find these mines all over the map regardless of whatever level city you're in. Now you guys can see here in the top right hand side of the screen, we have got three different main resources in Warpath. We've got our military funds, we've got steel, and we've got crude oil. Those are gonna be the three main resources we are going to need for our research to develop our base buildings. You are going to need resources for absolutely everything you do in Warpath. Now, in addition to the resource mines that you guys are gonna find scattered all over the map, you guys are actually going to have resource nodes in your base. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth with these resource nodes that are actually tied to your base here later in the video, but this is just kind of an additional extra way you guys can build up your resources. These resource nodes are not a high priority though. Like I said, we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth later. Now I want to quickly explain to you guys the different level cities that you guys are going to be in in Warpath. So when you first start out in Warpath and you just enter into the game in a brand new server, you guys are going to be restricted to level one cities. Now there are three different city levels in Warpath. There's technically four but the fourth is Theater of Conquest. That is gonna be something you're gonna experience down the road. But in your actual server, there are going to be level one, level two, and level three cities. Now, why do I bring this up and why is this important to resource gathering? The reason it's important is because each level city that you move up, so when you go from a level one to a level two city and a level two to a level three city, the higher level the city, the better resource collection mines you will find on the map. Let's take a look at Baghdad, which is our My Alliance's level one city. Then we're gonna look at Tehran, which is our Alliance level two city. And then we're going to look into Stalingrad, which is our Alliance's level three city. So let's jump into Baghdad real quick and let's take a look at the different level resource mines that we are going to have available to us. We are going to have ranging from level one all the way to level five resource nodes available in a level one city. Now taking a look in Tehran, you guys can see we still have level four, level five resource nodes, but then you are going to have access to level six resource nodes. And then once you guys are able to enter and access level three cities, you guys will then unlock level seven and level eight resource nodes. Now, just as another bonus value add to you guys, I will show you guys how to actually zoom out on your map and take a look at where the best resources are on your map depending on what city you're in so all you have to do is scroll out all the way until you see these three boxes here on the left side you've got alliance scout and resource density all you've got to do is click the resource density box and you guys can see it will change its view and it will start to highlight different shades of green all over the map the darker the color green the better the resources in that area and again as another tip doesn't matter what city you are in level one two and three Generally speaking, the combatant command, which is going to be the main central objective of your city around that central area is going to be the best resources on the map. And then as you expand outward on the map, the resources start to get less and less. And when I say less and less, I don't mean there are actually less resource mines. Just the level of the mines tends to go down the farther outward you work on the map. So the more central you are to the map, higher level nodes and resource mines you're going to have access to. Now let's talk about Alliance territory and how this plays a role into your resource collection because it plays a very, very significant role. 
So your alliance, when you guys start playing, are going to have what is called a central command. This is essentially the starting point or the headquarters of your alliance. This is going to be the first building that you are required to build. And then from there, you can expand out your alliance territory. So after you guys have built and established your central command, then you guys are going to be able to build what are called villages. These are going to be able to be expanded from your alliance's central command. Now, why does this play a big role in resource collection? Well, you guys can see all of this actual colored area. This is our active alliance territory. Now, you guys can see this grayed out territory. That is not our alliance. But when you guys see territory that is grayed out like that, that is called inactive territory. So the Alliance is still in control and still owns that territory, but it is not active territory. And I'm gonna explain why that makes a big deal in terms of resource collection in just a moment. So here is a resource mine that is in our Alliance's active territory. And you guys can see if I farm from this resource mine right here, because it is an active Alliance territory, I am going to get a collection speed buff of 25%. And that is massive. That is going to help the rate in which you guys can actually collect resources tremendously. Now, keep in mind, you guys can collect resources from anywhere on the map. It does not have to be in your Alliance territory. It can be anywhere on the map, but you just will sacrifice the 25% collection speed buff if you collect anywhere that is not within your Alliance territory. And another interesting thing about Warpath that is different from most other games is there is no collection tax or anything associated with resource collection. Also, just another little side note, and I'm, I'm just kind of generally speaking here, maybe Maybe some servers run this differently, but I've been in a few servers and I have never been a part of an alliance or a server that has any kind of rule or regulation about collecting resources in another alliance's territory. It's pretty much standard practice to collect resources wherever you can find them. So if you are a new player, don't feel like you're going to get in trouble or you're going to be breaking a rule of any kind if you collect outside of your, your alliance territory. You want to collect in your alliance territory just for the additional advantages, but you're not going to get in trouble or piss anybody off if you collect resources outside of your territory either. Now, there are two ways you guys can actually go about finding resource mines that you guys are gonna wanna collect from. You can do it the manual way, which sometimes is the better way depending on where you're at, what map you're in, and a bunch of other factors. So when I say the manual way, all what I mean is you guys just can scroll out and you guys can view the map and just see what's around and what resource nodes are available. And you guys can manually just go down, scroll in on them, Okay, click that node and you guys can just dispatch a farm truck to that node and you're good to go. If you guys want a little bit faster of an approach, you guys are gonna come over here to the left, top left hand side. You guys are gonna click on this magnifying glass and you guys can actually pick the resource mine that you guys are wanting or needing that particular resource of. And then you guys can click the up or the down button depending on the level of city you're in to find the level of nodes you want. We'll just stick with level seven. We'll click search. Great, we found a node automatically and we can dispatch. So that is the faster way to do it. But there are times where it does make sense to manually search for nodes. For example, let's say you are in an area, maybe you're in a city that your alliance doesn't have any territory in. Okay, so you are going to want to find a particular resource mine as close to your base as possible so that way your farm trucks don't get attacked during combat drills, for example. Or let's say you are in a city where your alliance has territory, but just not very much territory and you want to get that collection speed buff, so you want to collect in your territory if possible. If you do this manual search, or I'm sorry, if you do the automatic search for resources, it's going to find a resource mine that matches what you've put in, but it doesn't necessarily find it within your alliance territory. Territory. So if you are wanting to collect specifically in your alliance territory, there may be a time where you have to manually do it. But for the most part, the, the system will automatically find you the best mine inside your alliance territory. Now let's talk about collection speed buffs because these are going to help tremendously as well. So to find your buffs, you're gonna come over here to the supplies button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. You're gonna click on supplies, go over to your buffs tab, and you guys are going to see a handful of different resource buffs. Specifically, we are after the 24 hour collection speed boost. This is going to grant 50% resource collection speed for 24 hours. And 50% for 24 hours is huge. You can turn and burn some resources at a very fast rate with that. And if you guys take into consideration, you guys pop one of these 24 hour collection speed boosts on top of the 25% that you're actually going to be getting from collecting within Alliance territory. I mean, now you're really moving some resources back and forth and you are going to be able to build up your resources 
very, very fast. Now you guys can also see there are some additional resource buffs. We have got military fun drive, we have got steel drive, and then oil drive, and those are going to play into the actual resource buildings in our base. Now when it comes to the resource buildings in your base, you guys are going to have four of each. You guys are going to have four treasuries, you guys are going to have four steel works, and then four crude oil reserves. Obviously, you know which one produces what. These buildings are helpful because over time you are going to get the money and the rather over time you're going to get the resources back that you invested to upgrade these but it takes a long time because the output of these buildings is not very much they're not anything is better than nothing so when you have these buildings you are going to get extra resources for free is it going to make a significant impact on how many resources you're going to be able to build up not really not really we can see on info how much we're going to get when it's maxed out all of my buildings in my base are maxed out at level 32 we can see this is going to produce 75,000 military funds per hour and in the grand scheme of things especially once you start getting later game and start having super expensive tech and things like that that's not going to do a whole lot for you at all but again Something is better than nothing, but what I would advise you is do not invest much into your resource, your base resource nodes until all the other buildings on your base are maxed out. Prioritize everything else and come back to these at the very end. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about that is going to help with your guys' resource collection is going to be your industry technology. Now, when you guys start out in the game, you will not see all of these different resource categories like I have got. You guys, when you start out, will have two primary main categories and that is going to be your industry tech and your military tech your industry tech is by far the most important thing to focus on in regards to your research and technology early in the game because this is going to help your production speed this is going to help reduce research time and this is going to increase not only the level of resource mines that you're going to be able to farm from but it is also going to increase the speed in which you can collect those resources so you guys can see if we click on rubber industries here this is going to unlock level three collection sites for us and if we click on steam power we can see this is going to give us one extra collection truck which means we can send out more trucks to gather more resources when you guys are completely maxed out on your collection trucks you guys are going to have a max of five collection trucks you can use at any given time and then as you guys continue to work through your industry tech we'll, we'll use this cranes tech for example this is going to be universal collection speed so this is going to increase the collection collection speed for all three main resources. And then you guys have got resource specific collection speed boosts. So we'll use arms industry as an example. This is going to increase our military funds collection speed. So you guys have got universal collection speed buffs, and then you guys have got resource specific buffs. So make sure that you guys early in the game do not neglect your industry tech. You guys do not, and I've seen it happen. You're gonna think I'm lying, but I promise you I am not. I have seen it happen. I've seen guys get all the way to level three cities and they did nothing in regards to their industry tech. They put everything into military tech. They got to level three cities and they could not farm any resource mines in their level three city. So what ended up happening is they had to go literally sit in a level one city and continue to farm really crappy amounts of resources while everybody else that prioritized industry tech was able to go into the level three city and benefit from the higher level resource mines and the guy that put everything into the military tech got a little bit of an advantage in combat early, but everybody else that invested in industry tech and their development started to pass him up. So the key takeaway there is do not neglect your industry research and technology. I know that was a lot to unpack, but again, Resource collection and resources in general are going to be so vitally important to your growth and development and warpath. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this brought you guys some value. If you guys have access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is gonna be in the description of the video. Click on that link. It'll take you right into the community server. Whether you are a new player and have additional questions and wanna learn, or if you're a veteran player and you just want to come hang out with people in the community. Doesn't matter. Absolutely everybody is welcome. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the video today, guys. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.